This is the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I give you greetings. I'm My name is Evangelist Tony Abram. And a uh, little bit of sad news, but probably a lot of happiness in heaven. Um, someone I knew, uh, someone that's done an awful lot of work for the Lord in his lifetime, uh, Evangelist Morris Cirillo, he passed away. It was in May or June of 1963 that I got acquainted with Morris Cirillo. He, I was, Marge and I were in England setting up the crusades for T.O. Osborne. I was associate evangelist, making preparations. Mm -hmm. And at that time, Morris Cirillo had a gospel tent up in London, England. And we heard about it, so Marge and I, we showed up. That was the first time I had met him or been around him and got getting acquainted with him in his ministry. And something I learned that day, first of all, he preached a sermon I never forgot from Hebrews, the 11th chapter, the first six verses about faith. And then after we saw him leading souls to Christ, and then his ministry, he had a miracle ministry. And I know, remember he had this prayer line called and a long line of people. There was probably 2,000 people in that crowd that day, maybe a little less. And uh, it was warm for uh, England. It was warm under that tent. But I remember him stopping and pointing people out and declaring their healing. And one that really impressed me a lot, although I had seen this at Catherine Coleman's ministry and at T.L. Osmond's ministry, but he just pointed there was a man there with his, his leg must have been three inches, uh, four inches, 10 centimeters uh, sh short. And he just spoke the word and that leg just came right out. So I was impressed and had a lot of fellowship with his coordinator. Uh, over the next couple of days, I made a point to get back into London. And, and then years passed uh, by and in the late sixties, when Mar Marge and I were ministering in South America and we came into Chile and he, he actually paid uh, for the advertisement and so forth. He sponsored, I forget how many, maybe a half a dozen crusades for us. And of course we were young then and, uh, and we sure didn't have money to pay for advertising and so forth. We, I guess we had spent about six, eight months no, I think on that trip was uh, only four months. And here here we were doing the crusades and uh, he would sponsor them. And in the open air crusades, we planted, I, I guess at that time, at least one church in every small town that we went to from the north to the south. And if you heard um, my one episode where the woman was running across uh, the front there in that open air crusade, chasing someone with a butcher knife and then the boy that uh, had cancer dying in Peru and his father came to the meeting, saw the miracles and then uh, prayed and God healed that boy in Peru, 200 kilometers away uh, by the power of God of cancer. And uh, well, that was a, that was a crusade sponsored by uh, Moore Cirillo. So we had a lot to thank him for, but then later, uh, Missionary evangelist Walter Zagrebich, when he was 19 years of age, came to Bolivia. This was in the early 70s and uh, ended up being my uh, interpreter and crusade coordinator for seven years until I sent him to, <laughs> I sent him to uh, Africa and he was to prepare crusades in Kenya. And who did he meet there? Morris Cirillo. And when Morris Cirillo saw Walter uh, Zagrabich, he, I, 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 I accused him of, of stealing Walter from our ministry, but it was God's time because brother Walter in his next couple of years under more Cirillo's ministry, although I think Walter considers me his first mentor and, uh, even sister Copeland, who was a, uh, voice of healing evangelist back there uh, in Missouri. I remember her 
prophesying over Walter that I'd always be a big brother to him. And uh, over the years, I, I guess I have. We He's bounced a lot of things off our ministry. We've we've connected so much over the years. Uh, he's tra He traveled in a lot of countries with us. And uh, of course, later on, I got involved with him when when Russia and the former Soviet Union uh, came uh, uh, open and we were able to go in and work with them. We still work with Brother Walter. Right now we're doing uh, these uh, sessions for overseas uh, via Zoom, but that's another story. I'm getting away from what I wanted to share. And uh, Morris uh, Cirillo uh, had Walter translating in his school there for a couple years. And Walter got to translate the leading Bible teachers and evangelists and missionaries and pastors in the, in North America, and uh, it 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 really he got a lot of the word and a lot of uh, and I believe that's why it's, God's given him a great ministry that he has today of global vision, and anyways uh, I remember one experience with Morris I was. Uh, invited as a guest and and uh, at one of his uh, partner meetings and and uh, even though I didn't agree with everything Morris did in, in the way he conducted his his uh, ministry but he's a great man of God and I, of course I don't agree with every even my wife sometimes we have disagreements but uh, a, a, anyways when you say you never had one with your wife or your husband ah <laughs> yes we all have some but. Praise the Lord. I remember him coming up this time and uh, he hugged me and he reaches up and he says, uh, boy, Brother Tony, you're a big Jew, aren't you? <laughs> and, and of course, he was short compared to me. And uh, and the times went on. We we had some uh, connection with him and we, we appreciate it. But the last time, I wanted to tell you about that. Uh, if you remember a few years ago, that they had that earth, not earthquake, but volcano explosion in the country of Iceland and in Europe and uh, all around that area. And I, I was in uh, Ukraine at that time, teaching in a, in a Bible school. And uh, uh, that took place and no planes were flying. Well, I was wor wor not worried because uh, I was there ministering and teaching and uh, so I get a call from the Cirillos and Brother Walter was with them at that time, helping him in uh, Northern Europe. They were up in Sweden, I believe. And uh, Cirillo wanted to know if if I could take the three crusades they had planned in uh, Ukraine at that time. And I says, well, I could take one, but I have no plane because they couldn't fly out. They were stuck there and uh, their Eastern uh, outreaches were all canceled uh, or would be have to be canceled. And they wanted to know if I would take his three, uh, <laughs> three crusades. Well, I said, I can take one. And uh, I says, I can, I can do one, but I have no plane to get her to jump around. And uh, they said, well, uh, would you take the one? And, and I said, yes. And that was kind of amusing because uh, the advertisement had gone out for more Cirillo. And here the people flooded the auditorium and and we had hundreds of people come to, to receive Jesus. And that's the greatest miracle. I was thrilled over that. And a lot of miracles of healing took place. And and But the people, some of them were confused. They thought I was more Cirillo. And I've done that. I filled in for different evangelists. Uh, they've contacted me from David Wilkerson and uh, different ones where I filled in. I'm kind of like a uti utility uh, ball player. You know, you fill in at uh, shortstop, sometime you're second base, third base. Maybe they'd have you out in the field. Well, uh, that's happened in my ministry. And I I always thank God for it. I come in, they've done the advertising. I, I remember in, in uh, was it Kenya? Uh, one dear brother there, evangelist, I'm not going to mention his name. He, uh, he spent about $5,000 on the crusade, but he couldn't stay. He had to go. And he said, Tony, would you take it? I said, yes. Here I got 10,000 people to preach to, and I hadn't had to pay a penny for advertising. And uh, they thought I was this other fella. <laughs> it's happened in Moscow and different places. 
And so I'm kind of a utility evangelist at times where others have paid the expenses and we come in and do the job. And uh, But anyways, on this one last time when I filled in for Morcerillo, it, they uh, they kind of looked and some of the people were talking. We thought Morcerillo was shorter. <laughs> we thought Morcerillo had hair. <laughs> but anyways, the bishop and all that said it was the will of God that I filled in. Well, God has a perfect plan. And if we're willing to be where God wants us to be at the right time, that's important. And so we have a lot of good memories of Morris Cirillo. <clears throat> He's not suffering anymore. He's in the presence of the Lord. And I know that he longed to hear God say, well done, good and faithful servant. And that's what we all want, don't we? And so I could go on with some other memories, but I don't want to take too much time. And when a minister of God graduates, and that's what it is, graduation. He's had graduation. And though he was honored here and loved by millions, I believe, his impact will continue. And even though he may be buried or whatever, I'm sure buried, his testimony will still go out. His works will still follow him. And don't we want that too in our lives and in our ministries? We all have a personal ministry. I'm not preaching to you. I'm just talking to you from my heart. I love the preach. But uh, I, they, I don't think they'd like me to take a whole hour on here and preach to you. But anyways, you can you can go to our channel and uh, on YouTube. And you can go to our website, get everything you need from there www.tonyabram.com and we want you to know we're praying for you. But in closing, I want to pray for the Cirillo family and for the ministry as it continues uh, and then for all other ministries. Will you pray, pray with me? Not for ourselves, but for others. Father, in Jesus' name, we know that precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And we know that Brother Morris has gone on to be with you, Lord. And Lord, his rewards, I'm sure, following him. And Lord, I pray for the family. Comfort them. Give them wisdom and knowledge as they continue the ministry that he has built over the years. And yet he did not build it. You built it for him. Give them wisdom, guidance, direction, and most of all, comfort at this time. And Lord, I pray for other ministries. Lord, I think how three days ago from England, someone that probably nobody knows, but a dear sister went on to be with Jesus. And they had a wonderful ministry there in South Chard. And Sister Pauline. And I know how her husband's going to miss her too. So we miss these that go, but Lord, there's great rejoicing because they're now in the presence of the Lord. And they wouldn't want to come back, Lord, even if they could. And Lord, we just ask for comfort for all of them. And bless all your workers, Lord. All your pastors, evangelists, teachers, prophets, apostles, deacons, workers. Oh, Lord, in Jesus' name, blessings today. Well, friends, we, we love you, appreciate you, and uh, praying for the requests that come in. And remember to pray for us. We need your prayers as well. And uh, this is episode 49 and dedicated to the Cirillo ministry. You may not have liked his ministry a lot, but that don't matter. You have to love him uh, or you won't make heaven. <laughs> That's what I often tell people. Well, you got to love me because if you don't love me, you're not going to make it because we're to love one another. Isn't that right? Well, we love you and God loves you even more. God bless you.